Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at converting fractions into decimals, specifically with decimals that have repeating numbers or terminating decimals. We're going to look at both, and also we're going to do this using long division. So this will be a lesson that your parents can definitely help you out with because I guarantee they have seen long division before. Let's get to it. Before we get started with today's lesson, I do want to tell you an exciting piece of information, something that I'm really proud to announce, that I'm starting to build some math courses. I'm going to build grade level math courses that have lessons similar to this, only they're a little bit enhanced, so a little longer, but there are practice worksheets with full video solutions. I'll have a grade book set up so that you can um, watch your progress and also as a note, it will cover all the United States national standards in order for each grade level that I do. So I wanted to announce that once those courses are complete, I'll have a link in the video description for those. Let's get on to today's lesson. Today's lesson is with long division. We're going to do some long division and practice, and then we're going to do long division with decimals and then practice. Let's do it. First, I want to give a brief demonstration of how long division works using this example, 20 divided by 2. If you've seen long division before, you can kind of skip over this first example. Um, if you've never seen long division before, I probably recommend that you go watch an entire lesson on how to do long division. This isn't a lesson on how to do long division as much as it is a lesson on using long division for converting fractions into decimals. But here's a quick recap. You set up long division in this way, and you ask yourself how many groups of two are there inside of two? That answer is one. There's one group of two inside of two. And so we're going to multiply those two numbers, two times one, and put the result down there. We'll now subtract, and two minus two is zero. And now I'm going to engage the second digit underneath the division symbol here to bring that down. And then I, I start the process over again. I, I ask myself how many times the number outside that two goes into zero. In this case, that's zero. So my answer is gonna go up there. And then I multiply zero times two, which gives me zero and I subtract and I get my final answer. The number that is up top here is your final answer. So in this case, 20 divided by two is 10. It's a pretty basic question, but I just wanted to go over the steps for long division as a refresher for you because we are going to use those steps over and over. I also want to do two more examples. One is this silly example with a decimal. You don't normally write fractions with decimals in them. So I'm going to write this silly example out just so that we can see what to do with a decimal when we're doing long division. The secret is you basically ignore the decimal until the very end. Let me show you. Pretend that this said 24 divided by four. We would say how many groups of four are there in two? Well, four is bigger than two, so zero. And then we'd say how many groups of four are there in 24? Notice we're ignoring that decimal, pretending it's not even there. And then the answer is gonna go up there, six, and then we would multiply those numbers four times six, put our answer underneath here and subtract. Again, pretending that decimal doesn't even exist. 24 minus 24 is zero. And there we go, here's our answer. The only difference is this point, we add the decimal. We just, and you can put that decimal up top at any time, as long as it's directly above where the decimal is inside of the division symbol. So that's our final answer, 0 0.6. In our final example, we are going to look at a division question that has a remainder. Before, what we've done is we always write it as a remainder. Today, this is what we're basically getting into. So again, a prerequisite here, let's get started. 37 divided by three. We ask ourselves, we look at the first digit inside the division symbol, so that three, and we ask ourselves, 
How many groups of three are there in three? Well, there's one. And then we multiply one times three or three times one, which gives us three. We subtract and get zero. Now I'm going to drop this seven down here. And I'm going to ask myself, how many groups of three are there in seven? And that response is gonna go up top. There are three groups of three inside of seven, or two, I'm sorry, two groups of three inside of seven. We multiply that two times three, and we get six, and then we subtract to get our final one that's left over. What this tells us is that there are 12 groups of three inside of three, and there's one left over. We often write this as a remainder of one, all right? And that's your final answer typically. If you've done long division before this point, that's the way you've done it. Now, today's lesson is that we are going to stop writing a remainder, and instead, we're going to convert that into being a decimal. Before you do that, I want you to practice one. I've done three questions, all different, but I want you to try this one out, 42 divided by eight. Go ahead and solve that, pause the video, solve that one, show me you know how to do some long division, and then I'll come back and show you the steps that I did. Hey, are you back? Did you pause it and do it? 42 divided by eight would look like this. Again, how many groups of eight inside of four, eight's bigger than four, so we put a zero there. Then we say how many groups of eight inside of 42? Well, there's five, five times eight is 40. We subtract and we have a remainder of two. There it is. If that's what you got, and then you are ready for today's lesson, that's kind of a prerequisite. Unfortunately, I spent seven minutes already talking about the stuff you need to know to be able to get into today's video. But today's lesson will cover now a little bit more, and that's that we are not going to do remainders anymore. No more remainders. From now on, we are going to be converting them into decimals. So let's take this question, 37 over 3. We've already solved that one with a remainder, right? We put the 1 minus 3, the 7, the 2, the 1. Um, and we've gotten to this point, right? We already did this question earlier. The difference in what we're going to do now is that we are going to add a point zero. So we're going to change 37 to being 37.0 and then continue on just the way that we would. Well, I'm going to put the zero up or the decimal up top there. Do you see that after the 12? I'm just going to go ahead and put that up there so that I don't forget for later. But we're basically going to continue on and pretend that that's a 370 now. And that's the main difference between having a remainder and, and having a decimal. That's the change right there. So let's keep going. Um, I did put the decimal up top after the 12. Um, that's a fine thing to do at this point. So let's drop that zero down. And then we ask ourselves how many groups of three are there? inside of 10, and the answer is three. We do three times three, which is nine, and we subtract to get our one. And then we add another zero under that, and we keep going. Drop that zero down, 10. How many groups of three inside of 10? Three. Three times three, nine. Subtract, one. And you notice at this point that you have a repeating pattern. So once it starts repeating, you can stop. That's your answer. 12.33 repeated or 12.33333333 forever. That's how you get a repeating decimal from a fraction. So 37 over nine is equal to 12.333 repeated. That's how we convert a fraction into a repeating decimal using long division. I'm going to do one more to show you another example of a fraction into a decimal. Seven over four. I set it up as a long division question. Seven, and I'm going to go the first step assuming that you know how to do it. How many groups of four inside of seven? One. One times four, four. Subtract, and I get three. At this point, I'm going to change seven to 7.0, and then 
put my decimal up top there so I don't forget, and then keep going. I drop that zero down. How many groups of four are inside of 30? There's seven. Seven times four is 28. I subtract and I get two. I'm gonna add another zero and keep going. Drop that zero down. How many groups of four inside of 25? Four times five is 20 and then I get a zero. So there's going to be one of two things happen when you convert a fraction into a decimal. It will either be a terminating decimal or a decimal that stops. If you get to a zero remaining, you stop and that's your final answer. Or you have the example that we did last time where you had a repeating decimal. Those are the two things that can happen with the questions that we are doing. There is also a third option where there's no pattern and it just keeps going on and on, but we're not going to focus on that. We are doing repeating and terminating decimals. Now it's time for you to practice. I'd like you to take a look at this one, 42 divided by 8. We've looked at this question before and done it with our remainder, but I want you to try this and do this with a decimal instead of a remainder. Pause the recording, try it out. Hey, welcome back. We've done the first several steps of this. Um, this is what we did before. We got it to this point and we said five remainder two. But we're not doing that today. We're changing 42 to 42.0 and we're going to keep going. I'm gonna drop that zero down. Notice I put the decimal up top um, next to the five. That's to just, you know, make sure I don't forget it later. Drop that zero down, five. I ask how many groups of 20 are there, or how many groups of eight inside of 20? Well, there's two of them. So I'm gonna multiply two times eight gives me 16. I subtract and get four. I'm gonna add on another zero, drop it down. How many groups of eight inside of 40? Well, there's five of them. Five times eight is 40. I subtract and I get zero and I'm done. Stop. Great job. That is where we end. Our final answer is 5.25. So 42 over eight converts to the decimal of 5.25. This is an example of a terminating decimal, a decimal that ends. If you're looking for extra practice, remember I am building those courses. So check out the video description and see if the course is created, you'll have a link to it there. They again have enhanced lessons, they've got worksheets with solutions, they've got a grade book, and they cover all the national standards for your entire grade level. Um, once the courses are created, I will be posting them. A couple things to remember, um, the steps for long division are really important. Adding a point zero after a number does not change the value of the number, and remember the decimal in your final answer. Don't forget to put that in there. I hope that that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.